this is The Wretched, an actual play podcast of a game by Chris Bazette and played by Ben Maddox. Episode Zero, The Monster and Me. Hey, darling. Look, will you lot shut up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the hundred day party. Can you imagine? Me, your boring old dad in space for a hundred days. <laughs> well, as you can hear, I'm on board with a load of reprobates. <laughs> They're good people, though. What? No, don't you dare. Anyway. Fraternisation is not allowed during mission. The last thing you want up here is that kind of drama. <laughs> anyway, we, we spoke about this. I'm really not ready yet. You'll find someone one day, someone special. Someone who becomes more important than you, and when you do well, then... <laughs> well, then maybe you'll get off my back. Drink too much? Well, of course I will. This is my hundredth day, and if, if someone gets sick or does something stupid, well... Well, I'll have to wait till tomorrow to see a doctor. Whenever tomorrow is. There are clocks on the wall, but but, but when you're out here, in this, this infinite nothing, you, you realise that things like time are, are truly just the creations, the fevered brains of apes. <laughs> An hour feels real at home. Here... It's just a hand on a clock, moving, nothing more. That's why the... I don't know, that's why the hundred days is so important. It it feels like something. It it feels like I've thrown a line into space and hooked it onto a star. (laughs) I look at the chart and I see Ross 154 and I think, here, here is where I was on my hundredth day. Here, in this whole vacuum of nothing, here feels real. (laughs) Yes, of course, I miss you. I love you. You're my life. (laughs) Yes, I do know the woman behind me is attractive. No, you can't talk to her. I don't know what you'd say. Look, all right, I'm the guest of honour here, so I have to go. It's just another hundred days, and I'll see you in person. We can eat some real food, and I'll tell you all about what it's like to be in space. (laughs) And what you'd be good for Jenny. I know you are. Love you. See you soon. All right, you good for nothings. Where's my bloody drink? Willkommen, willkommen to the first zero session. Session zero, the zeroest of all things, of this live playthrough of The Wretched. Now, when I first started doing these things back in the thousand-year-old vampire days, I, I sort of put out a tweet saying, you know, what other good ones? And, and this one always came up. And But someone mentioned Long Hall, and Long Hall seemed really new and interesting and a, and a weird place, you know, not a usual kind of trope. And then and then I thought Colossal would be interesting because it was something that was sort of out of my remit of usual sort of goth writing and all that gubbins. But, you know, I could not do a series of journaling role-playing games without covering this one, The Wretched, which which seems to me, I mean, I don't know a lot. And, and you know, if you're role-play people who are listening to this and thinking, you don't know fucking what you're talking about. Well, I mean, I don't. But, you know, this one seems to be the one that people talk about. 
you know, thousand year old vampire really sort of brought it out into the mainstream, was super successful, but this seems to be the one that people talk about that's that's really important. And you know, this is what Long Haul is based on. I'm writing a game myself and it's kind of based on Long Haul. So so this is a great inspiration. And so, you know, I had a little break for December and I thought I'd come back and I'd start a new RPG series. So here we are, The Wretched. So basically, I'm going to read out this bit at the beginning. Give me a second. So there's so there's a safety prompt at the beginning. And I'm I'm always interested by these things. And, and and please get in contact. I'm always interested. There's a safety prompt that says, you know, the wretched is a, a game that deals with death and confined spaces and physical injury. And you know, you need to know this beforehand. I mean, are people that fragile? I, I mean, I don't I don't get it. It's the sort of content warning thing. I mean, it's kind of all right, I suppose. But I don't know. I'm very much of the view that art, that the beauty of art is that it can take you into places that you can't go in real life. Because if you were to go into them in real life, you'd hurt yourself or you'd die, you'd go mad or whatever. And, you know, I don't know. I'm very much of the idea that, you know, being a, you know, being an actor and everything, and a writer too, that, you know, art, you, you should go into places that are tricky for you. And these these wonderful games are not are not just games, right? These wonderful things are also ways to explore stuff that you just simply can't. And you know, I don't know. I always feel it something of a cop out to say. And if it gets too much, just say no. But you know, each to their own. But yeah. So if you look at the PDF which I have here, there's a safety thing that says safety if it gets bad and that. But you know. That's fine. I mean, you do you. You do you. And I I totally understand. So, then, who? You are the last surviving crew member of the intergalactic salvage ship, The Wretched. It's a bit of a rough name. Adrift between stars after an engine failure, your ship was attacked by a hostile alien life form. The crew are dead. You're alone. You thought you had won. You launched the creature out of an airlock, and that should have meant safety. It didn't. The creature survived, somehow immune to the cold, empty black of space. Now it skitters and crawls across the hull of your ship. It seeks a way in. It wants you. Now it's you versus inevitability. Can you keep your life support systems going long enough to repair your distress beacon? With the beacon activated, you can keep the creature at bay long enough to be rescued, assuming someone hears your cry. Or probably not. But you have to try. I mean... I'm not going to lie to you, this isn't the most, you know, original premise in the world, but it's great, isn't it? I've been thinking this game has been sort of running around my head. I mean, it was an inevitability that I was going to do it, and it's been running around my head for ages, and it's great fun. All right, I'm going to tell you a story. So yesterday, I thought, I'll do the bumpers for this show. I'll, uh, you know, I'll do the intro and the outro, Um, and I, you know... And then, so when I come to edit the show, you know, and I'm, this is Sunday, the day before the show goes up, I don't have to do so much, right? I don't know, because the bumpers always take me bloody ages, because, you know. So, I do the bumpers, and then I hit a button, and I completely override two hours of work. Two hours of my life just gone. And it was unretrievable. Well, it probably was retrievable, but, you know, boomers shouldn't use computers, should they? And And so... Yeah, I nearly, I nearly murdered my computer with my fisticles. Anyway, so yeah, that was great. Uh, I wasn't very happy about it. Carrying on, what? So The Wretched, I'm reading from the book here. I'm not going to read all the book, because, you know, you should go out and buy it. The Wretched is a game about human resilience in the face of overwhelming odds and almost certain death. It's a game about isolation, fear, and perseverance. You play the lone survivor of a horrific attack. You have seen and done terrible things. You have seen your friends, your found family, brutally butchered by something you can't even begin to comprehend. Something that you were sure didn't exist until it manifested itself aboard your ship. You're existing on the edges of your endurance, high on adrenaline and fear and desperation. You're sure you won't survive this, but all you know is to keep fighting. 
So it says The Wretched is inspired by the music and films of John Carpenter, the music of Nine Inch Nails, as well as the games You Are Not Alone in This Life, which I don't know, and You Will Die Alone Out Here in the Black by Alden Roswell, which I'm going to look up after this. And, you know, it's a little disingenuous because it's clearly alien, isn't it? But nevertheless, I mean, John Carpenter's great. The thing is great. And and so another thing you don't know when you buy this, this is why you should go and buy this if you're into these kind of things. The Wretched, so the song you heard at the beginning, when you buy The Wretched, it comes with, you know, a number of songs, a soundtrack, like three versions of the soundtrack. And the music's great. It's really good. And Chris Bissett seems to be a very talented guy. And, and what I've noticed through reading this is long haul. So I, I, so I thought the Thousand Year Old Vampire was very simple. Long haul was a little bit more complex, and the Colossal was a lot more complex. Felt more like a sort of standard RPG mechanically. And this is fascinating. This one is stripped back. Uh, there's no character creation. There's no character sheet. And you just have to sort of... And you're supposed to be you, I think. I'm not going to do that. But, so, how do you play? Well, you need a standard deck of cards. Here we go. Standard deck of cards. No jokers. A single six-sided die. And uh, here I'm using my Cthulhu-themed die. (laughs) my Cthulhu noise there. So I'm using my Cthulhu themed die, which has an elder sign as the number six. And a tumbling block tower. And I assume you have to put tumbling block tower in a book like this, because Jenga is a copyrighted term. And they'd sue you, and they probably would as well. It's Hasbro. I mean, I'm the open gaming license and all that gubbins, isn't it? I, I, it it's funny, isn't it? It's funny. I was talking. I was talking a little, little bit of a little bit of a tangent here. I was talking to some friends about this. That I was playing D anD D yesterday, and I was talking about this open gaming license thing. And we're all kind of a bit befuddled because the the one thing about so so five e got as big as it did. I think firstly through you know it's mechanically great. It's it's light. It's simple. It's easy to play. But also this idea of having an open gaming license that you can produce stuff that brings people in. That, that gives them an investment in the product and they will spread that sort of evangelism and make the game big is, it, it, I mean, it's just it's just so short-sighted to think, oh, we want to make 20 extra bloody quid, so we'll ban you from creating content. And it's also very much at odds with especially role-playing games, I think. Role-playing games are, are very much about sharing community taking people's ideas and building on them and and making these things that that tell wonderful stories and and for a corporate run sort of place i i felt that D&D was was really quite surprising and and evoked the spirit of games and so this open gaming license thing where you're not allowed to produce content or something is is concerning. Hopefully it won't be as bad. But you know, I was watching I was watching the one D and D trailer and I kind of despair at American politics, both on the right and the left. They don't inspire me. So where were we? So yes, you need a standard deck of cards. No I I my tangents are great, are they? Twenty twenty three. I'm less focused than before. Uh a tumbling block tower. I went on a popular purchasing platform on the internet and I bought a Jenga thingy and 10 tokens of some kind preferably a collection of nuts bolts and screws now as I'm I I don't have that at the moment I'm going to come clean with you but as this I'm not playing this is the session zero and I'm talking about sort of who I am and all that gubbins uh I'm going to get that for the next time and then I need a way to record my game and, and this is the way I'm recording it So, there are only two positive ways out of this situation, and each is more unlikely than the last. First, you could activate your distress beacon, survive long enough for someone to hear it, then continue to survive long enough for them to get to you. Second, you could fix your engines and leave the creature drifting in your wake. You can fail in a multitude of ways. Now, so I'm going to do something different here. Because there's no character creation, I'm going to create my character sort of here because I want something to hold on to and basically you've heard who 
the character is in that initial message, but I just want to write it down and codify it for you. So, so what I think Chris Bazette wants is for you to use your real name. And I'm going to use my real name. And, and, and like, like Long Haul, I think he wants, I, I get the impression he wants you to, uh, improvise. I'm not comfortable with that. I like writing and I, I do these as writing exercises as much as sort of podcasts. So I'm going to write the entries. And so who am I? So I'm Ben Maddox, right? Obviously. Uh, hi, hi, I'm Ben. If you've never listened to this before, yes, I ramble. And so I'm the ship's doctor. And I, I thought that would be nice because, you know, I'm not very clever. And so there's absolutely no chance I'd ever be a bloody doctor. But role-playing games, you could be whoever you want, can't you? Yesterday, I was an r monk. And today, I'm a ship's doctor in space. So I'm a ship's doctor. And my wife isn't around. Will this... I, I haven't fully decided yet, but um, whether she's alive, whether she isn't, whether she left me, whether she died, whatever, that probably will come out during the play of the game. I have a daughter. And I guess from the impression that you get from the message, she doesn't speak to her mum either. Now, I picture the daughter... So if, if you listen to the message... So the daughter is old enough to start recommending women to her dad. She wants her dad to find a new girlfriend. But she's also not old enough that she doesn't need a carer, so he mentions the carer. So I'm going to say the daughter is 16. So she's she's at that age where, you know, they can talk to each other kind of like they're friends or whatever. Um, He's new on the ship. This is his first mission. I think that's nice. It adds some poeticness on that. And I think on the ship, there is harmony between the crew. And But I like the idea that there was an undercurrent of dysfunction that will be revealed during the play of the game. Because, obviously, this can't be a game where you just talk about what you're doing alone on a ship. You've got to get Solaris with it, haven't you? You know what I mean? So, an undercurrent of dysfunction. So, as a result of this, he doesn't really have knowledge of the working of the ship. So this is why he can't fix the engines. I mean, he's a doctor, he's a clever guy, but he he's a, he's a newbie here. He doesn't really have knowledge of the working of the ship. And yeah, so that's who he is. So I'm going to go over that. So it's it, Ben Maddox is the name, ship's doctor. Uh, his wife isn't around. He has a daughter who doesn't speak to her mother either, it seems. The mother is gone, whether that be dead or left or whatever we don't know yet the daughter's about 16 he's new on the ship there's harmony between the crew they seem to get on with each other but there's an undercurrent of dysfunction that will come out during the game he doesn't really have knowledge of the working of the ship which is part of the reason him being alone okay so that's who he is that is the character i've created and you know, he doesn't have character creation. It was really surprising when I read it, actually, because I, I'm used to other sort of various iterations on this. And this is very stripped back, very simple, but actually, actually really super interesting. And I haven't read any of the prompts. So I, and I think with these games, the real quality lies in the prompts. And I don't know if they're great because I haven't read them because I want them to be a surprise. Okay, so to begin in the book, it says, set up the tumbling block tower. So... Are you listening? I'm opening this fucking Jenga thing in front of you now. Look at this. So, this is the sound of cellophane. If you've got a phobia against cellophane, I bet someone has. You know, everyone's got a phobia. Every phobia must exist, I assume, at this point. So, if you've got a phobia against cellophane, tough as shit us. But here, the Jenga tower is now constructed. There we go. And I'm going to 
pull the cardboardy sandy thing so it doesn't fall over anything. That's the official name. Away. Oh, come on, you bastard. Hang on a second. Oh, I did it wrong. Hang on. You've got to turn it over so it just slides off easy. Give me a second. I am really great at this. Hang on. Oh, I'm going to drop the Jenga tower everywhere. Okay, 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 okay. Boom. Boom. That's the greatest thing I've done this year so far. I'll turn that Jenga tower over. And the Jenga tower is over. And the Jenga tower is standing. Freestanding. It's a freestanding thing. Okay, excellent. So, set up the tumbling block tower as you normally would for games of that nature. Roll your die and complete that many pulls from the tower by removing a block and replacing it on the top row. The tower represents the state of your ship. Okay, are you excited? Um, roll the dice. Keep it rolling. Good, good. If I'd have rolled a six. If I'd have rolled a six, then I'd have lost my shit. The world hates me. But no, I rolled a three. So, okay. I'm going to take three blocks out the Jenga tower. Give me a second. I'm really bad at everything, including Jenga. Jenga Unchained. Uh, here we go. Oh, there's another one. Number two. I'm going to put some uh, drum rolls underneath this. Two. Mm -mm. Oh no, I don't want to take it. I don't want to take it inside. I want, to, I want it to be stable. I want the ship to be stable. There we go. Number three. So this, I'm going to take a photo of this. So, you know, next time and all that. So, set up a tumbling block as you normally would. This tower represents the state of your ship. If it falls at any time, a catastrophic systems failure results in your death and the game is over. Woof. If you do not have access to a tumbling block tower, you do not need to. I do. So, shuffle the deck of my playing cards. Are you excited? I'm going to shuffle the deck of cards. Every day, apparently. You love this, don't you? I'm doing it live. You love it. Doing it live. Okay. And then I'm going to do that special shuffle I learned at the casino. There we go. If you wish to play a shorter game, I don't. Make sure the Ace of Hearts at the top of the deck. Record your first audio log, reading from the script that follows. So, you're going to hear now the audio log, day one. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to write it, because I, I, yeah, I'm going to record it, all right? Catchphrase, all right? Day one. The salvage ship. The wretched. Ship's doctor. Ben Maddox reporting. The other members. The other members of the crew. are dead. And the engines remain non operational, though ship integrity remains good and. Life support systems are still active. I successfully jettisoned the intruder from the airlock, but it remains alive. It continues to try to access the ship. With a little luck, I can repair the distress beacon. But somebody will pick me up. This is Ben Maddox, the last survivor of the wretched, signing off. Boom, that was dramatic, wasn't it? Uh, uh, so, the thing is, I'm recording this in fucking January, right? And I'm assuming, I'm assuming that uh, the Oscar board because uh, that's what it's called, the Oscar board has, has listened to the previous RPG episodes, and I'm expecting a juicy nomination. Welcome to the Oscars and that. Hi, my name's Johnny Johnson. I'm the host of the Oscars. Like Ricky Gervais did it in that, but this year it's me, Jonathan J. Johnson. So, yeah, this year we've broadened our fucking searching category for the academy and that to knobheads on the internet 
So, nominations for Best Actor are Bradley Pitolo, again, Joaquin Phonix, uh, Robert M. Johnson, and from the internet, the world's biggest bell end, Benjamin W. Maddox. And if you want to know what the W is, ask him, he won't tell you. So, who do we think is going to win? And the favourite at 8 to 9 is Benjamin W. Maddox. That's the Oscar Ceremony Award nomination announcement. Cheers. Yeah, so that'd be great, wouldn't it, if I got an Oscar nomination this year? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Just like Nobed on the internet gets nominated for an Oscar for his fucking long haul episode. I mean, I deserve it. I mean, that bloody long haul. I've been listening. I released the uh, Just the Narratives on, on Twitter. On Twitter. On fucking Twitter. On, on Patreon, just to the patrons. So just the recorded bits. You know, I've been listening to them. Woof. Woof. Jealous. Jelbus. You should be. Anyway, so. All subsequent reports should begin with the statement Day X. I'm not going to say X. I'm going to say a number. Salvage ship the wretched ship's doctor Ben Maddox reporting. In order to assist... With an accurate reconstruction of events, should your ship be recovered? So I can see the italics, you can't see the italics. The content of the rest of the log is up to you and should at least summarise the events of the day. Okay, so it says now you're ready to begin. And so the way the days work, very similar to long haul, is phase one, the task. So I roll the die and I draw that number of cards. I like it's a very simple mechanic. Turn over the first card, and I assume that pulling from the Jenga Tower will be in the prompts, right? And then I turn over the first card, I drew and consult the operations manual, which is, you know, will tell me what's happening. And then when I've completed my task for the day, discard the cards I've used, unless you were told otherwise. I like that. And that's one thing I loved about Long Haul, right, is that the, the deck is, I've shuffled it, and it's now fixed. And I draw cards, and they just go out of the game, and so the deck dwindles, and you know, and I assume because in the in the in this rule book it says it takes about thirty minutes to play. I mean, that's not going to happen. It must be longer than that. But so I assume the death comes quickly in this one. But it'll be very interesting. And then phase two, the log. Take a moment to consider the events of the day, keeping in mind what you've learned about the state of the ship, the actions of the creature, and how you're feeling. And record my audio log. So and then in the book. So basically. There are four suits, and hearts represent your ship's systems, the life support, water purification, and all that. The diamonds represent your ship's physical structures. So when you draw a diamond, you're physically engaging with the ship, patching up the hull, sealing doors, and all that sort of gubbins. Clubs represent the crew. When you draw a club, you're reminded of the people you've lost, which is nice. I like that. And spades represent the creature. It may have a presence. So I, I really I really like that, that you have these four elements. And, and actually, it's super fascinating that none of them are focused on you. It's focused sort of all externally. And so why I've created a character, so I have a note, is because you have to, in this situation, when you're alone, you have to refer to you. And so, yeah, super fascinating. And so I've got that stuck in my head. So what I what I love is he also says in in the book that he says you know you should have a microphone to record it but he also mentions things like you know if you don't have a microphone that's fine you can use things like Twitter to play the game like a live playthrough on Twitter sounds like a really good idea and and um yeah I, I might do a live playthrough of the wretched afterwards actually and and do a sort of voting system. That sounds like a really good idea. Anyway, so that's it, I think. So the next time you meet me will be session one of The Wretched. And uh, I'm gonna like fucking, uh, you know, beat the alien and that. Do you think I'm gonna beat the alien? Hashtag beat the alien. (laughs) Hashtag fucking Ben, a doctor, are you having a fucking giraffe? Hashtag beat the alien. Yeah, so thank you for listening. Of course, as always, if you want to back the show and get more of this solid gold action, you can go to patreon.com forward slash 5G for D. And yeah, I'll see you in two weeks for another episode of The Wretched. All music by Chris Bizet. The, the game can be bought at Loot the Room. Dot itch dot 
I am. If you want to support the podcast, you can do that by going to patreon.com forward slash 5G4D. Thank you for listening.